my friends. So I'm going to show you right now how to make the most delicious, completely vegan Thanksgiving meal that you're going to love, but also your family, your friends, even full on carnivores are going to love. Okay. So first and most importantly, I think it's the most important thing of the entire meal, is mashed potato. So what I've done here is I have my 360, my trusty uh, pan here, and in it I have cut up two large russet potatoes. This is for four people. So generally, if I'm using a large, like a baked potato, uh, size potato, uh, it'll be half per person. If I'm using a Yukon gold potato, the smaller ones, it will be one per person and one for the pot, whatever you're making. So right here, as I said, I have uh, two large russet potatoes cut up and I cube them really small like this so that they'll cook super quickly because we don't want mashed potatoes to be a whole big production. Then I sneaked in a little bit of cauliflower, but just one cup of cauliflower florets because it adds a nice texture, it makes it a little more moist, and you've got some cruciferous veggies in there, so you're making it healthier, and nobody will be the wiser, I promise you. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my heat on. And as is always the case with 360 pan, you start with a nice high heat, uh, almost the highest heat. And I have very little water in this pan, maybe maximum half a cup of water. It's my favorite way to cook my veggies. Then I'll just pop on the lid. And when it starts to steam, I turn the heat down to the lowest it will go. And these will be ready, I would imagine, in about 10 minutes. Okay, so these are tender, fork tender now. I've drained out the excess water, which wasn't very much, and I'm just going to just very roughly mash, uh, mash it with a potato masher, like this. And I actually love to create more of a puree for my potatoes. It's sort of up to you. And so this is what I like to do. So first off, I'm taking some Earth Balance, which Earth Balance is really just a vegan spread. You could use olive oil, but Earth Balance gives it a little bit more of a flavor, a sort of buttery flavor. So depending on where you live, if you're in the US, you'll get Earth Balance. If you live in the UK or somewhere else, you may not be able to find that exact brand. And I'm going to pop in about a tablespoon Thanksgiving, so I'm kind of being a little more generous there with my fat. Um, there we are. You could uh, add a little bit more liquid, a little bit of veggie broth, um, if you want it to uh, be, uh, you know, not to, to give it a little bit more of a liquidy texture. And um, you could also add a little bit of plant milk, like a soy milk or an almond milk. But I have to say that I am not a huge fan of plant milks because I think they do impart, for mashed potato, because I think they do impart a little bit of a strange flavor, a flavor that just takes away from yummy mashed potatoes. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna puree my potatoes with my immersion blender. Easy, easy. Okay, so a little bit of pepper, ground pepper, a little bit of Himalayan sea salt to taste. And now I'm just going to whip it up. Oh my gosh, who doesn't love mashed potato? And what you can do with your mashed potato is, you could actually, if you're using a pan like this, and say you make this the day before, you could just pop the lid on like that and put this in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to reheat, you could put in a tiny little bit more 
of your vegan spread and pop the entire, this is a stainless steel pan, into a very, very low oven, about 300 degrees, and just let the whole thing heat up. And why it works with the 360 pan, and links for the 360 pans underneath the video, is because the lid forms a little lock, so it keeps the moisture in, so your potatoes won't dry out. But you may have a different way of heating up your potatoes. You may decide to put it in a glass container with a lid and pop it in the microwave. Um, it's up to you. Um, but either way, you can make your mashed potatoes ahead of time. Okay, so obviously this is vegan, uh, so we're not using turkey. A little tip here is go to Farm Sanctuary and adopt a turkey instead. That is a lovely thing to do, and I'll put a link underneath this video so you can do just that, donate to the Farm Sanctuary. Um, and I've tried a lot of these different meat-free alternatives, and this one is my favorite one. It's by Field Roast. It's the Celebration Roast. It's stuffed with butternut squash, apples, um, and mushrooms, it's really, really delicious. Um, and, you know, I think it's made with um, uh, grains, so it's not for those who are gluten-free. If you're gluten-free, there's one by Gardein. There's various other ones. I'll pop some links underneath this video, but I really like this one. And again, depending on what country you're in, you'll probably, hopefully, find a really good one. But my point is with this one particularly is to cook it correctly. So you'll obviously take it out of the packaging, put it in a baking dish or a baking pan with about half an inch of water because you do not want it to dry out. Trust me, I've had it when it's dried out and you don't want that. So about half an inch of water. Then what I would do is pop some fresh herbs around it. I love to use thyme and sage. I'm lucky because I have those in my yard. Um, so I've got, you know, and then, so the herbs will steam and basically will steam slash bake this so it'll be moist and absolutely delicious. Okay, so I like to get my uh, do ahead of times done first, maybe a couple of days before, certainly morning of. So the first thing is a vegan gravy, a mushroom vegan gravy. And this is arguably the most important part of the entire meal. Because if you have a delicious gravy, you can almost make anything taste delicious. Your potatoes, your veggie, your meat-free roast, whatever it is. So it's really easy to make. Stay with me. This, these are the ingredients that you need. I've got an onion. Okay, there's a small onion mince, three cloves of garlic. I have about eight ounces of mushrooms, brown mushrooms, that I have sort of chopped up relatively finely. Also, I have added to this, which is not, you don't have to do this, it's just a nice touch. I've added some dried mushrooms. And I added those by literally soaking them in warm water for about an hour prior. That's the juice that they were soaking in, the soaking juice, which I'm going to use in the recipe. Again, not necessary, but it is a nice touch. It adds a depth of flavor to your gravy if you can do that. And any kind of dried mushrooms will do, whatever you can find in the grocery store. We then have flour, four tablespoons of flour, recipe obviously underneath the video. Two tablespoons of cooking sherry gives it that really, really deep flavor, as does vegan Worcester sauce, a little bit of balsamic, salt, pepper, and some veggie broth. So the first thing that I'm doing here is um, I've just fried off the onions. Now, you can use a little bit of oil, cooking oil, a neutral tasting oil, about just under a tablespoon, or if you want to go oil-free, go a little healthier. I have just used a little bit of the veggie broth just to cook off my onions there. Now I'm going to add my garlic, three cloves of garlic. In it goes. Who doesn't love garlic? Always be careful that you don't burn your garlic. That's why you always want to add it after you've added the onions, when the onions are almost cooked. So you just want those, the onions, to be translucent, softened, and then you're good to go. As I say, it's a very, very, very quick recipe. No sweat. Excuse the pun, sweating the onions. I love that term. All right, next to go in, we're going to put in our lovely mushrooms. So all those are going in. Lots of mushrooms. Mushrooms are so healthy. I think mushrooms are kind of like 
the forgotten um, health food, the new health food for this century. There's so, they've got so many immune fighting compounds. It gets a tiny little bit dry, so instead of adding more oil, I'm adding more veggie broth. That's the secret weapon if you want to stay oil free. So we'll just let those mushrooms soften up a little bit, just cook through. I think it could do with a tiny bit more broth. And as I'm doing that, I'm now going to add in the two tablespoons of cooking sherry. Now, if you don't want, if you don't like using alcohol because you don't drink alcohol, do not worry because when you cook it, all the alcohol is cooked out of it. So all you're left with is just a really delicious flavor. So that's really, really easy. So we'll just let that do its thing. And in here I have three different kinds of mushrooms. I've got brown mushrooms, and then my two dried mushrooms, a shiitake and morels. What I would have used had I had them in my cupboard is porcini, because they give the best flavor. So if you're able to get hold of any porcini mushrooms, get them because they are going to give your gravy an incredible flavor. This is so much better than a meat gravy, I cannot even begin to tell you. Okay, so that looks all about almost ready for the next stage. Uh, I think now I'm going to add my Worcester sauce. It's vegan Worcester sauce. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon, just eyeball it maybe a tiny bit more. My daughter's been using this because it's almost finished. She loves it. It gives everything, again, a really nice flavor. So that's gonna go in there. And then my secret weapon for this gravy is I'm going to add a little bit of aged balsamic vinegar. It gives it a tiny bit of sweetness, but it's just, it's really hard to explain. It just gives it such a nice flavor. So I'm gonna do probably about two teaspoons worth in there. I'll pop in my salt and my pepper, the ground black pepper, a little bit of Himalayan sea salt. Oh, that was the wrong way up. All right, now look at that. That looks so good. And now into that, I'm gonna pop in now my flour. You can use an all-purpose flour. This is an ancient grain flour. Those are the ones that I tend to buy. Or you could use a gluten-free flour if you're gluten-free. So that's what's gonna make your gravy really, really thick. Okay, so just mix that in, combine it really well. You could always put some herbs in, by the way, if you want. You could put in some sage, some thyme, some rosemary, if you want to customize it. Now, now is the time for me to add my veggie broth. So two or three cups of veggie broth. Um, but what I have done, because I use the mushrooms, the dried mushrooms, what I'm using for this recipe is two cups of veggie broth. You can either make it yourself, you can use a bouillon cube, or you can get a box, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's vegetarian and low sodium, that's what I would also recommend. And then I'm using one cup of the soaking uh, juice from the mushrooms because again that is so deep in flavor so that's going to go in we'll throw all that in and then I am just going to let this cook for about 10 minutes actually and really let it thicken up so what you want to do is actually bring it to the boil because that's going to be how it's going to start thickening. And when it comes to a nice rolling boil, then I would turn the heat down a little bit so that it gently simmers away. And as I said, I would, now you can see it's really boiling. You don't want it boiling that hard for 10 minutes. You want to just turn it down. And I wouldn't leave it if I were you unattended because you don't want your beautiful mushroom gravy to spoil. I'll let it simmer now, as I said, for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, doesn't have to be exact. 
but make sure you stir it every now and again while you're chatting to your friends so that it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. Okay, that is lovely and thick now. Now you can leave it chunky if you want with the chunks of mushroom in, but I think it's way, way better to blend it. So let's do that. Okay, so uh -oh, I'm ladling it into my blender, my Vitamix, but you can use any kind of a blender. And I do, by the way, recommend that you ladle it because if you try and pour the whole lot in when it is hot, I've made this mistake so many times before when I'm impatient, it will splatter everywhere and you will not be happy and you'll be wearing your beautiful Thanksgiving or holiday clothes and you'll just be like, what have I done? And then that very last bit, you can't really see that, is going in. All right. Now I'm ready to give it a good blend. My trusty Mod Vitamix that gets used a gazillion times a day in the Giuliano kitchen. All right, let's get it on low. Sometimes I made that mistake as well. Now, you don't want to sort of over blend it. So you might want to give your pieces of mushroom in it still. Up to you, your preference. And the other reason why I think it's really nice to blend it is all the uh, things like the garlic will just uh, permeate through your sauce, your gravy. All right, look at this. This is my gravy boat. So I want to show you. Look how delicious that is, my friends. I mean, seriously. And you can pop it in a sealed container in the fridge and keep it for up to four days in the fridge and just heat it when you're ready to heat it. And if the texture is a little thick, I like really thick gravy, but if it's a little thick, you can always thin it out with a little bit more veggie broth. Delicious. Now, no Thanksgiving meal would be complete without Brussels sprouts. And in here, I have something that coming from England, I'm absolutely obsessed with is roast parsnips. I just love parsnips. They just have such a beautiful flavor. Try them if you haven't. This year, try them. So you can boil your Brussels sprouts, but who doesn't love a roasted Brussels sprout? So you can see how much I've got here. It's probably about, I don't know, three cups of Brussels sprouts, two parsnips. You know, cut them up relatively small because you want everything to cook you know, about the same cooking time. Just always remember that when you're roasting or boiling something, make sure everything's round about the same size. Now, I mixed into this one tablespoon of a neutral cooking oil, no more. I tend not to like to use too much oil for cooking, but in this case, it's Thanksgiving, and I'm making an exception. And these were quite small Brussels sprouts, so some of them I halved, and some of them I did not. It depends on the size. If you have huge Brussels sprouts, they're not very nice if they're too big and they take a long time to cook. So, you know, if they're too, if they're quite big, then I recommend um, just halving them. And that's it. And this is going to go into a hot oven, 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. But, this is a big but, when you're roasting your Brussels sprouts, you have to keep checking and turning and moving them around because the little bits, like the little leaves that come off, will go to the side of the pan and they will burn. They will get super crispy and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, what's burning? So what I do is I go in every 10 minutes and I literally remove the little leaves and put them on a dish. They're delicious. They'll be part of the finished dish, but you don't want to, uh, you know, to have everything burning. So that's that. Okay, so what I've done is these have been in for about 20 minutes and they're getting all toasty and nice. But what I've done for the last um, sort of 20 minutes of roasting time, I've added in some peeled and already cooked chestnuts because I think chestnuts go so well with Brussels sprouts and with parsnips. And if you wanted to take it to an even fancier level, you could put in some little chopped up bits of benevolent bacon by Sweet Earth. This is one of my favorite bacon 
quote unquote uh, vegan bacon brands. It's really smoky and delicious. So that's just a, another little option for you. If you get that out, get the quote unquote strip out, rasher out, cut it up really thin and just mix it all into this. It's quite moist and it'll just roast up really nice. And actually that in of itself, the bacon, the chestnuts, the parsnips, and the Brussels sprouts is uh, an amazing dish in of itself, if that was all you served. Okay, our next do-ahead, you can do this a couple of days in advance if you want to, is cranberry sauce. It's so easy to make, I beg you not to buy it. There you go, cranberries, I've got about eight ounces of cranberries, fresh cranberries here, rinse them well pick them over, make sure there's no bad ones in there. One of the healthiest fruits on the planet, the highest level of antioxidants due to this deep red color. It contains an anthocyanin, uh, uh, it's an antioxidant called an anthocyanin, um, which is crazy good for you. Now, I'm gonna add about half a cup of water, that is to eight ounces of cranberries. I'm gonna put it on a high heat just to get it boiling. Um, let me get my spoon and um, then what I'm going to add is, let me find it here, is a little bit of orange zest. That is about half a teaspoon of orange zest. You can add more if you want, uh, but I don't like making it too orangery. It's completely up to you. So sort of flavor choice, or you don't have to add it at all if you don't want to. Some people also like to add a little cinnamon. If you add cinnamon, then make sure that you are using Ceylon cinnamon, as it's the healthy kind of cinnamon. And then, to sweeten it, because you have to have a sweetener, um, I'm actually gonna use quarter of a cup of maple syrup. So pure maple syrup, not fake maple syrup, that won't work, but it's gotta be pure maple syrup. And um, if you are diabetic and you want it to be completely sugar-free, you could use um, erythritol. And I'll put a link underneath the video for erythritol. Okay, we're gonna let those come to the boil. As you can see here, as soon as the water starts getting really hot and simmering, their little cranberries are bursting open. You can hear them popping. So it's actually really fun to cook. I love making cranberry. It's the kind of way making popcorn. And sort of know it's ready when, oop, when every single one of them has popped. So it'll take about eight to 10 minutes, but you want to make sure that they're all popped and getting really mushy. Also, I wanna say that if it isn't sweet enough for you, and it might not be for some people because I actually like it really tart, but it depends. Some people like their cranberry sauce a little bit sweet. You may want to add a little more maple syrup. So just test it when it's cooked. And if it isn't uh, sweet enough, you can add another quarter cup of maple syrup. <laughs> I mean, keep adding until you get your desired uh, sweetness. Cut to entire bottle is in the pan, right? Okay, so can you see now how this has been boiling for not even 10 minutes? And all the cranberries, you can't really see the individual cranberries anymore. They've all sort of burst apart and it almost becomes like a jam or a jelly, but it's so delicious. And you saw how easy that was to make, which is why there is so no reason to buy it in a can or in a jar. And you're gonna lose a lot of the nutrients that way. So just, just pop it in here. And again, it's really, really, really easy to make ahead of time. There we are. Or you can keep it, serve it straight away like that, or pop it in a in an airtight container in the fridge for sort of up to four days in the refrigerator. So for my greens, I am going to do peas, organic, uh, garden or English peas because I think they're actually way easier to cook than green beans and They cook so quickly no topping and tailing and in this 360 uh, pan it takes two minutes So that's what I'm doing That's my little lid there we go and as usual, this pan, you wait until it heats up 
and then uh, it takes a minute for it to start uh, on high heat steaming, turn the heat down to low, and literally in one to two minutes, the peas will be ready. Okay, can you see Sunshine, my little helper, has been on the floor behind me, is on the floor, and has been on the floor of the kitchen the whole time that I've been cooking my uh, Thanksgiving dinner or prepping my Thanksgiving dinner. But why not finish off the whole meal rather than champagne or wine or apple cider? Go for a beautiful glass of kombucha. This is by Health Aid but there are a lot of really, really good brands in, in most places. And this is the Pink Lady Apple that I think is so delicious. So I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving and you can see now how easy it is to put together a completely vegan, plant-powered meal that is absolutely delicious. And honestly, if you do those go-aheads, like do the gravy, the cranberry sauce ahead of time, and actually you can even do the potatoes ahead of time, um, you can really put that entire thing together in less than an hour. So no sweat, have a beautiful Thanksgiving, and check out my videos as soon as Thanksgiving is over because I'm going to be doing a bunch of Christmas lists, Christmas gift lists. So I have three different videos that are gonna come out really soon after Thanksgiving, and I don't want you to miss anything. Cheers. Hi, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, there are hundreds more. And please also visit my blog at sophieuliano.com for detailed reviews, recipes, DIYs, and more.